Hi, everyone. Hey, hey everyone. <laughs> Happy Wednesday. I see the conversations about who got here first. It is Esta as usual. Hi, Esta. <laughs> Milan, you almost made it. <laughs> Hi, Nafisa. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Happy Wednesday. Um, welcome to our weekly Clever Girl Finance live call. Um, we have this call every Wednesday at 1, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And my name is Bola Shokumbi. I'm the founder and CEO of Clever Girl Finance. We're an online. <laughs> Look at your cat. <laughs> I don't know why he's awake. <laughs> but an online financial empowerment platform for women. Um, we offer over 30 plus free courses. Our entire platform is free. And our mission is to empower women and our allies to achieve financial wellness. And my co host with her cute cat, <laughs> Yasmir, will introduce herself. Hey, everyone. I'm Yasmir, and this is my cat, Clark. He's just making an appearance today. <laughs> I am. Uh, uh, content creator for Clever Girl Finance, joining you from New York City. Yeah, so while you're watching, um, please drop in the comments and tell us where you are joining us from. We would love to know. Hi, Sherry. Um, hi, Dahlia. So the, the most exciting news about today, before we get into the topic, is that today is the official release of my new book, July 6th, Choosing to Prosper, is officially out today. And um, I know that Amazon held this book at their warehouses and they're actually delivering it to people today. So I've gotten so many messages from friends and from um, people on social media saying that their book is scheduled for delivery by 3 p.m., by 8 p.m., by 10 p.m. So <laughs> if you get your copy in the mail, uh, if you haven't already ordered it, please do. But if you get your copy in the mail, please tag me or tag Clever Oil Finance on social media. Um, and I would love to to hear your thoughts about this book. And we're also gonna be giving away a copy of this book to somebody on this live session. Or maybe we'll do two copies, we'll do two copies. Um, and so, yeah, we're just gonna pick someone randomly from the comments. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, the other thing I wanted to share before we get into the topic is that on Saturday, we have our book launch event in New York City. Um, we're down to our last few tickets, but if you wanna join us, you can find out the information for that on the Clever Oil Finance Instagram page. Um, it's at 10.30 a.m. In New York, you get to meet me, you meet Yasmir, you meet other folks from Team Clever Oil Finance, and it's going to be a great fun time slash celebration of this book. So I see more people coming in. Hi, Peace of Tara. <laughs> Hi, Pearl. Uh, Yasmir, Peace of Tara says she has a cat that acts the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Michelle. Hi, E Music. Hi, Jillian. Hello, Lamar. Oh, wow, the comments are, I'm skipping over them. Um, Jillian's in Canada. So, yeah. Uh, Joan, you said your copy is going to be at home. Nafisa, you got your giveaway book. Woohoo. Hi, <laughs> Hi Ruth. <laughs> Hi, Ugo. Okay, so let's get into the topic. We're going to be talking about how to um, make money no start a business with no money no money <laughs> how to start a business with no money and a lot of times when people are thinking about starting a business they think they need all this money to get started but not necessarily and um so we're going to talk about that on this session and for those of you who are just joining in welcome thank you for tuning in um yeah so let's get started yasmer Yes, so as Boa mentioned, today's topic is how to start a business with no money. Um, and you're probably wondering, like, how is that even possible? But we're here to tell you today that it is. And we're going to go over um, some steps that you can go um, through uh, to achieve that goal of starting your own business. Yes, yeah, so, you know, when you hear someone say how to start a business with no money, you're like, well, that can't be possible. But sometimes people have a ton of money and then they start a business and they have to shutter it because they didn't have a plan. Right. So mm -hmm. sometimes mm -hmm. starting a business is less about the money and more about how you execute. And so we're going to talk about those stages of execution that are not going to cost you anything but your time and your commitment. And so, Yasmar, you I guess you'll go over the first tip. Yes, the first step is to brainstorm business ideas. So you don't want to go in 
um, not knowing what you really want to do um, as far as business. You may have a lot of ideas on your mind. Um, so the first thing to do is just take out a piece of paper and write down all the ideas um, that you have in your mind. Doesn't matter. Like if it, it may sound like a little crazy or not doable for you, doesn't matter. Just just start writing them down, and then from there you can narrow it down to uh, what excites you the most. What business idea excites you the most, and you can start there. And as Bola mentioned before, you can have a lot of money and start a business, but then that business doesn't do well because you don't have a plan for it. So it starts with the idea and then you can just work from there. Yeah, so for those of you who are tuned in, um, I would love to know what your business idea is, what business you're thinking about starting, leave it in the comments. Um, you know, when you when people say they wanna start a business, um, they say, okay, I wanna start a business doing website development. I wanna start a business selling XYZ products, but they have not done much more than say, I wanna start a business. They haven't laid out the plan. They haven't identified their target audience. They haven't identified their marketing strategy. They haven't identified um, what they need to build this business. And so the first step of starting any business is more than just saying, I want to start a business. It's actually putting pen to paper, getting on your computer, a word document, and really laying out the plan for this business. So many people have money to start businesses and they're like, I'm going to start a business as, I don't know, a publicist. They start the business with no plan and then the business struggles and fails. So starting a business with no money, this is this part is free, is you sit down and you create a plan of what your business is, who it's going to serve, serve. What products and services do you intend to offer? What platforms do you intend to, to, to market it? Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, you know, you know, what are your, how do you plan to get your product to market? Are you going to network with other business owners? Who are you going to do outreach to? It's really important that you lay out the plan for your idea. If you don't have the idea, Yasma just talked about brainstorming, right? What are the different things that speak to you when it comes to wanting to start a business, right? Obviously, we are certainly in a, in a, in a gig economy where everybody has some sort of side hustle going on. And a lot of people just want to pursue entrepreneurship on their own terms full, full time. So what, what are your ideas, right? It took me two years to come up with the idea of Clever World Finance because I just didn't know what it was. Um, and so even if it takes you time to figure it out, even if it takes you time to lay out your plan, it is still worth the time and commitment and effort you use to brainstorm, uh, you use to lay out your plan because it's helping you get prepared not to waste your money when the money starts coming in. So I see some people sharing their uh, business ideas. Um, thank you so much, Dawn. Um, I appreciate it. So Shelly said she's a notary signing agent. Slim Girls said they have a home-based beauty salon or they're thinking of a home-based beauty salon specializing in facial treatments. Uh, Jillian said video editing, but not the right type of laptop due to money. Okay, we'll talk about that some more. Um, Yvonne said bookkeeping for small companies. Dmail said drop shipping, children's clothing and home decor. There's so many great ideas here. Oh my gosh. Um, life coaching, specializing in people with disabilities or permanent injuries. So for all these business ideas you have shared, whether you have the money or not, right? Um, get out a notebook, get out a Word document, whatever, Google Docs, whatever, and write down your plan. If you have this idea, what is your plan? So Jillian, you talked about video editing, right? Who do you want to do video editing for? What types of clients would you would you like to seek? What are you going to charge? What can be done based on the current computer and current software you have right now so that you can create a strategy to earn more money and upgrade your equipment? You want to start there. So there, I love all these ideas I'm seeing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Dahlia said, she three of my books. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. <laughs> Um, she has a cleaning business, um, doing very well. That's awesome. So yes, please, please. The first thing you want to do is more is do more than say, I have a business idea. We need to get the plan on the paper and map out exactly what we want to accomplish and how we plan to earn this money. Right. And that costs you nothing. So me 77 says, I want, I would love to write children's books. That's going to cost you nothing but your time, right? Write the book. Schedule the time on your calendar. Get started. So, um, okay, let's keep going. 
Yeah, so many so, great ideas here. Yes, very great ideas. Um, so we talked about um, brainstorming business ideas and um, and creating a plan. Kind of like put them all. In. There are two things. There's separate things, but we all talked. We talked about it like if it's a one thing. So the first thing is to brainstorm business ideas and then come up with a plan. And um, part of the plan includes things like you know what are the things are you gonna need, the supplies, and um, the audience that you you want or the the type of client that you want how will you reach them are your clients on social media are your clients at a college like you want to start think thinking about those things um, so you know like where you want to focus with when it comes to any products or services that you want to offer yeah so this point was kind of tied into the last point so brainstorming your idea and create a business plan um, and one thing i want to say about creating a business plan is please do not overwhelm yourself creating this plan um a lot of times people will go on google and search business plan and they'll get a hundred page or a thousand page business plan from a massive corporation you don't need that your business plan can be as simple as one page and all you need to highlight on there is what your business is about, who it's for, who you intend to reach, the products and services you plan to offer. Um, in fact, we have uh, an article on finance on how to write a business plan. And we have our completely free business, new business owners bundle. Again, free, no money needed, um, where you will learn about creating a business plan, brainstorming your idea, creating your financial plan for your business. Uh, what else do we cover in that course? Um, marketing your business, determining your avatar, so many things. We even talk about naming your business, how to go about naming your business in this course. So just go to coverwellfinance.com, go to the courses page and look for the new business owner section. But going back to what I was saying, your business plan does not need to be complicated and look at your business plan as a work in progress. As you learn new things, as you brainstorm, as you realize what you don't want to do, what you do want to do more of, what you want to test, you're going to continuously be updating um, your business plan. So the very least, this is one thing that you should have as a tab, even if it's a tab on the notes app on your phone or on your computer or in a notebook that you have around with you that you can review often, you want to start putting your thoughts about this business idea you have on paper. So all these incredible ideas you guys listed, right? What is your plan? You want to write a children's book. Um, what publishers would you like to pitch it to? Do you want to self-publish? What are the age of the children that you want to read this book? Where are you going to find an illustrator? Have you checked on Fiverr to start looking for potential illustrators and just get a sense of what their pricing is? Um, you want to start laying all these things down so you have a plan and a strategy as you start making progress to build this business. So we've talked about brainstorm your idea. Figure out what it's going to be. Um, when you're brainstorming your idea, sorry, I'm I'm backtracking here, but when you're brainstorming your idea, if you don't, so some people want to start a business, they want to bring money in, but they don't know what the business should be. You don't, you're kind of short on ideas. So a few ways to think about it. Number one, um, what do people compliment you about, right? That you do well, that you can turn into a business, right? What are things people will say, girl, you're so good at that. You're so good at that. Uh, what are things that you know you do well? You do this so well, right? You don't even need the compliments. That's a business idea. What is something that you are passionate about? Something you truly love, right? That's a business idea. And then what actual formal skills do you have, right? Whether it's educational skills, certifications, those are skills that you can leverage towards a business idea. So if you are unsure, start with these different areas, what people compliment you on, what you are good at, what you're passionate about, what you have the skill set for and see what ideas you come out with there. So brainstorm your ideas, create your business plan. Yes. This and the next nothing but time, no money involved. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. And, and the next tip also doesn't involve money and is to leverage free resources. Um, there are tons of free resources out there. Bullet mentioned that we do have a course on um, business at clevergirlfinance.com. Please go check that out. Um, I don't have it on me, but we have our Clever Girl Finance Side Hustle Guide, um, which is great. Um, you can buy it, but you can also oh um, gosh, ask yes. your local... <laughs> yes, ask your local library to order it for you um, and you can borrow it from there. But this is, yes. <laughs> so, this book, yes. I forgot all yes. about that. 
<laughs> Thank you. Yes, I meant to have it on me. I'm like, oh no, I don't have it. But yes, that's a great resource. And let me tell you, Bola, the author of that book, created a business, a very successful business. So this is a great book because this is someone telling you like the steps she took to create her successful business so yes leverage that there's um you know clever girl finance we have the the course we have our um articles um check those out there's also um uh services out there that you can use for free one of the ones that we like here is canva um which will uh, allow you to create designs for your business for free um you can um do that there's also, um, I think it's called Wix. Mm -hmm. I think it's another one too. Um, so there, there's a lot of free resources out there. Um, it's all about just finding them and leveraging them. Um, you can start by just Googling. Um, if you have uh, people that have started businesses, you can ask them. Uh, there's just, there's, there's tons of free resources out there again, like, no money needed and you can start there and then later on of course like you know if you wanted to make upgrades as you're bringing in money from your business yes you can go ahead and um, invest in those but to get started just don't free don't don't like feel free to just go and and look out for those um free resources that you can use yeah. So when it comes to, so now you have your idea, you know, your business plan, and now you want to give your business a presence, right? You don't have to spend money to give your pres your business a presence out in the world. So uh, there are platforms that allow you to create free websites. And by the way, this is not a sponsored um, video. So we are just mentioning these brands because we happen to like you. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to sponsor Clever Girl Finance. Feel free to reach out for a brand partnership. But... <laughs> Be lucky that we mentioned you in this video. <laughs> uh, but again, so you're getting your business off of its feet. You have your idea. It's time to execute, right? You do not need to spend money. So as Yasmin mentioned, there are websites like Squarespace and Wix that offer you the opportunity to build a free website that you can put out into the world, right? Um, it's really important that as you build your business, you have a presence and not just any presence, a presence that you own and you own that web page present that corner on the internet. Um, it's not tied to Facebook or YouTube or Instagram's algorithms. You're not subject to who they want to see you. Um, instead, you own this website and you can direct people, your potential clients to it, right? So starting a website, that is free, right? And on your website, you talk about, I talk about all about what you should have your website in this book. Um, you have your about page, your products and services, you have your brand story. Why did you start this brand, right? Uh, you have all these different details that will build that likability, that trust um, with your potential audience so that they then become your customers. Um, the next thing you want to do is create a social presence. Again, it's free to start a YouTube channel. YouTube is more investment of time and being comfortable on video, but really it costs you no, nothing to record a video because so many incredible creators on YouTube record on their phones. They record videos on their phones. And if you're watching this, you, you certainly have a smartphone, right? Um, uh, Instagram pages, TikTok pages, uh, Twitter pages, these are all pages that um, you can create for free. So you have your website, you have your, uh, your social pages, and then you want to create content to showcase how amazing your business products or service or your idea is, right? Even if you don't have the actual product yet to sell, maybe you're still gathering funds to make it, you can still talk about your products, but and you can leverage design tools to create those graphics, uh, those details about your product or even your services using platforms like canva.com. Um, and so those are all free resources. You can create your email list using free platform like MailChimp, right? Where you can start to build this email list and send out to potential customers or have people sign up to your list so that you can grow this audience so that once you have a product to, to sell, you know who to reach. Um, and then one thing that people take for granted is leveraging the free resources that are right in your neighborhood, your local library, right? You're looking for business books on marketing, on selling, on content creation, visit your local library. And then another resource is resource is the sba.gov, the Small Business Administration. 
they offer so much in terms of just like legal structure, setting up business guidance. They offer mentorship through their SCORE program where they can pair you up with a mentor who has built a business in your community to guide you. Again, all of this costs you zero dollars. This is you getting your business up on its feet. It's costing you nothing to do this. Too many people tell me, I don't have money to start a business, so I'm not going to do it, right? That's not a good enough excuse because there are all these, you could have brainstormed the idea, you could have built the business plan, you could have set up the website, you could have set up the social accounts, you could have leveraged the, the um, SVA.gov resources, you could have leveraged your library resources. Um, these are all things that help you by the time you have your website, you've actually started a business. You've started something. So no money is not an excuse. Um, please, please leverage these free resources. And just sidebar, people always ask me, well, before this book, this is my favorite book, but before, <laughs> because it's a new book, before this book, people always ask me, what was my favorite book to write? And it was this book because I don't often get to talk about, as you can see, I'm so excited. I don't often get to talk about the business of building a business, right? Because I'm a finance expert. I talk about money, tips, saving, investing. I don't often get to talk about the business of building a business. And in this book, I got to talk about it, the entire book. And as Yasmin said, this is everything that I've, I've done to build my own business in this book. So um, no excuses, right? You can start a business with no money, right? Um, what, else was, what else was I going to say about free resources? Um your local library can give you access to software, right? So let's say you don't like Canva or you have advanced skills and you actually know how to use Photoshop. Sometimes your local library, if you go there and use their computers, you can actually use their, the, their license in the library to create the graphics that you need. So you can get your business off of its feet for on its feet for zero dollars. Um, someone asked here about, I saw a question I wanted to answer because I know this is a common question. Uh, see, Canva, you need to reach out to us for a brand partnership. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, so Yvonne asked about how to pay yourself from your business. So I guess that happens when you essentially start to make money. And there's a really great book for those of you who are just getting started. It's called Profit First. I'm going to show you this book. Um, the book is called Profit First. And this is a great book for people who are um, sole proprietorships and LLCs, um, which you should have a business legal designation, by the way, right? LLCs give you that protection that you need, but most people start as sole proprietorships. But once you start bringing money in, please fill out the paperwork and set up an LLC just for that legal protection in the event of any legal issues. This is a great book. And so if you're making money, in terms of paying yourself, you want to think about... Um, Percentages, right? Um, what percent are you? What percent of your income that you're bringing in can you afford to take out of the business without inhibiting your business's growth? Obviously, you want to be able to pay your bills, but you want to be able to lay, lay out percentages. So, what percentage will you pay yourself? And then you also need to put a percentage aside for taxes because once you start making money and you have profits, the government <laughs> is going to want their cut. Best believe. Yes. <laughs> 100%. Um, and then you also want to put money aside for emergency. So the same way you have your personal life emergency fund, you want to have your business emergency fund. Once your business starts making money in the event that things slow down, but you still need to keep the business running. So think about percentages. Check out this book. Um, it's a really great book on paying yourself um, first, um, especially as an LLC sole proprietorship. Okay. So Kay Tor says she used her thesis on AI and visual marketing to start a consulting agency last year. That is amazing. Mm. Nice, yes. nice. Oh, we are doing a giveaway. So if you're just joining us, this book, we're giving my new book, which launches today, we're giving this away to someone we're gonna pick from the comments. So yes, SBA, great resource, um, sba.gov, sba tons of resources. Definitely take advantage of that. Okay, so let's keep going. Yes, so now um, you may be up to the point where you're uh, realizing you may need some funds, right, uh, for your business. So just just to be clear, like to get started, like with 
building a, a business a plan um, you don't you really don't need money but you may need um, money now to you know make to make your product so you're gonna need those funds um, so at this point you might want to think about uh, a little side hustle um, that you will use that money just for your business so um, we wanted to hear from you all if you have a side hustle and what that side hustle is if you can write down in the comments and share we would love to hear Yes. Yeah, so you get to a point in your business where you may need money, right? Especially if you have a product, a physical product that you need to sell because you need money to, to establish this product. But sometimes when you think about your business um, and you, you, let's say you don't have any money or you need time to save money from your full-time job or from a side hustle um, to, to build money, to build the savings for this product that you want to offer, right? Uh, what can you do in the meantime? If you look at the history of many businesses, even Clairol Finance, you will see that over time, businesses evolve and shifts and pivots happen, right? So if you cannot um, bring your product and service into the market right away, what can you do right now? So when I first started Clairol Finance, I did coaching, right? Coaching was one way, one-on-one -on -one coaching, which I don't do anymore, was one way I was able to bring money into the business to pursue, to put that money towards other projects and other things I wanted to pursue, right? So what skill set do you have in relation to your business? So let's say you want to create candles, this is just a random example. You want to create candles. Can you do a class and charge people that teaches you, uh, teaches them the process of creating candles, right? Can you teach other people how to do it, for example? Or as Yasner said, you create another side hustle that funds this main hustle. So you look around your kitchen, your closet, all those appliances, those clothes you don't need. You put them on Poshmark, you put them on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and you get that money and you put it towards your business, towards creating your product. Um, you know, because products are harder to create than services. Service is really based on services is really based on the skill that you have right so that's easy to monetize without having any money but if you have a product you need money um what else can you do to bring money in to to enable you to um to create that product many just said that you can you can fund your product by selling other companies products as an affiliate um Jillian said tutoring is one way that you can use a skill set that you have to earn money to to build your um to build your your product or your service so you want to start thinking about ways you can actually bring in funds if you don't have something yet to monetize but again think about ways that you can think outside the box right you want to start a personal finance business you want to build a media company like clever of finance and you want to be able to hire writers right but you don't have the funds to hire those writers so what can you do right now well you have the skill set you have the certification you can do one-on-one -on -one coaching you can do group coaching to bring the money in and then you can pivot you want to open i don't know a hair salon and you know how to do hair really really well but what can you do in the meantime before you're able to open your hair salon you can do here for friends and family or just you know go to have a, a be a traveling stylist that's actually very very popular be a traveling stylist for example um, or teach people how to do the techniques and bring money in through those classes while you put money aside for your salon um so many so start thinking out of the box what is the idea that you have what's your main dream and what ways can you establish your business so that you can start to pursue that main dream start to save money towards that main dream you look at many businesses, they all didn't start out doing what they are doing now because they may have had limited funds at the beginning. So you want to get creative. Um, you know, don't don't say, well, I need to open this shop right now. So if I can't open the shop, I'm not doing anything else. No. Think about what other things you can do to save money to lead you towards um, towards opening that 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 shop. Um, so. That's yeah, I think. I think it's really important to think creatively out of the box and not be afraid to pivot. Um, you know, Dawn mentioned she used her side hustle in teaching private music lessons to build her savings. Um, so yeah, very, very important. Somebody just asked a question, which I missed about protecting yourself. Um, it's really important that you have the right legal entity. Foundationally, I would mm -hmm. say that 
LLC is to me is the minimum. You can start it as a sole proprietorship, but once this becomes a serious business, please at the very minimum, you want to have that limited liability um, designation on there so that you can protect your personal assets in the event of a lawsuit. They do not come come for your personal assets. However, right, you also want to make sure that you do not pierce that legal veil of protection, which means that um, if you are mixing, if you're an LLC, but you're mixing your personal and business funds, then you have pierced the legal veil of protection and it really doesn't matter anymore. So you want to make sure that you're separating your business finances. It's very important. Um, if you have any copyright anything, make sure you put your trademarks in place. Like Clever All Finance has so many trademarks in place. We're constantly sending ceases, ceases and desists. <laughs> Don't try us. <laughs> Cease and desists. <laughs> Our lawyer will contact you. But because <laughs> people out here listen, listen. People yeah. will go, people go onto our website and then they copy like the entire everything. They copy all the free courses, everything, and they go put it on the website and then they try to sell it. And we're like, mm -mm. Oh, it's no. free for a reason. You can't do that. <laughs> so um, <laughs> so K Torres also talks about protecting your brand with trademark, deposit at the beginning. Exactly. So Things you want to keep in mind. So again, this now this is now stuff you want to put into your business plan. You may not have the money to pursue to you know pay for a trademark right now, but you can put it as a line item as a to do in your business plan. So these are things you want to keep in mind. Your your legal structure should be a to do in your business plan. I'm going to become an LLC. So um, Navy girl asked a really great question, which. Have a really great answer for. So, how do you find the time when you work a nine to five and you travel to and from work one hour each way? Um, I have a side hustle, so I can relate to you one hundred percent. I was working more than a nine to five actually, and I had twin babies when I started Clever Real Finance, um, and I did have a one hour to commute to and from work. And you just make the time, and you will be tired because for me, it was waking up at four or five in the morning before my house woke up to work for an hour. It was sitting at my desk or in my car on my computer during lunch to work for that hour. It was coming home and um, putting my kids to bed and then nine, 10 o'clock working till midnight. And I was tired, but you can do that for a short period of time while you find your footing. On the weekend, um, I was always working on the weekend, but again, a short period of time. So number one, get clear of on your goals, right? If you're going to take this time away from sleeping, from your family, from your kids, please do not let it be a waste of your time. It needs to be strategic. You need to have your business plan in place. You need to be working on execution. You're going to be working late nights. You should not be on Instagram scrolling. That's not why, this is not why you're up late. You're up late to run, to build this business. So it's you find the time because you make the time and you will be tired, right? Dada said lots of early nights, uh, or late nights, early mornings, but you can do this for a short period of time if this is something that is tied into a why that you want bad enough. So, yeah, we have one more tip to share. Yes, and that final tip is not to be afraid to invest in yourself. So you might be making money from your business. Um, it would be a great idea if you invest in yourself. So how can you make that service or product better? So you might want to invest in books, in online courses, um, anything that will help you master your skill. And this can be a little hard because you don't want to let go of that hard earned money. Um, but it's good in the long run because any way you can enhance your business um, can potentially bring you more money in the future. Yes. And, you know, I've heard people say, I work a full time job and my business is not making any money. So I'm not going to put a dime into that business. That is a wrong approach to thinking about it because if you do not invest in yourself or in your business, then you minimize the chances of success and the chances of growth. So if you're working full time while you are putting money aside for your life goals, maybe you have a small designation of money that you put aside that you invest in your business. The way I was able to start Clever World Finance was by saving money to put into the business to help the business get off of its feet once I had leveraged as many free resources as I could leverage. Also, if you can afford to buy books or go to your library and borrow these books, 
books, that's an investment in yourself because you're building your knowledge and expanding your, your skill sets to help you execute this business. So do not be afraid to invest in yourself, but invest in yourself strategically, okay? I am not a person, and I will tell it to you as clear and as clean, clean cut as day. Do not go out buying courses uh, thinking that they're going to be the golden ticket to your business success. I think it, the statistic is ridiculously high. Something like 80 or 90% of people buy these courses and they never actually complete the courses because they log in and they realize, oh my God, this is hard work. <laughs> And then like, you know what, I'm just going to buy another course because that one seems easier. Oh, no. Wow. This is another course that shows me how I can be a millionaire in two days. I'm going to buy buy this course. And now you have like 10 courses that you've paid $10,000 for, not done any of them. And then you say, I don't have any money to start a business. Do not do that. OK, there's nothing that a course cannot that a course can teach you that you cannot read in a book. Right. It's just the the difference is the difference is really convenience and ease of access everything we teach on our clever Girl finance courses you can learn them in the clever Girl finance books as well you can learn them in our articles it just depends on how you like to consume your information through co through courses audio video structure quizzes by reading a book and taking notes yourself by reading articles and bookmarking them it's how you choose to consume them but Please do not assume that any course is a golden ticket. Any coach is a golden ticket to your success. And all you have to do is pay this coach and pay this course, and then you're going to be made. No, usually not the case. You dedicate the time, dedicate the effort. You make the mistakes because you will make mistakes. I've made so many mistakes in this business. Every business owner has made mistakes. You learn the lessons, you adjust, you pivot, you pivot, and then you keep moving forward. So Investing yourself does not mean spending a ton of money. It means time to expand your skill set. And sometimes you may get to a point where, you know what? I actually need to make this investment in this course, in this coach, in this class, this certification. That's fine. But you, when you, you will know when you get there because you've done everything possible where you have now re reached a roadblock. And I talk about that. I talk about my roadblock point in this book where I felt like I got to a point where I just needed the next level. I needed to be able to get to the next level beyond my skill set building my business. And then that is when you know, right? So um, don't get caught up in these and no shade, no nothing against anybody. This is personal talk, right? Um, know yourself first before you get caught up in buying all these different courses that can make you rich because <laughs> the likelihood that they will make you rich are, is slim to none they're really just making the the person who's selling the course rich right so yeah. yeah so invest in yourself read books youtube has a ton of free resources check out the books on clever finance our free courses um all of that so yeah so now we have to pick this giveaway winner Yes, no, you're picking yes. because I picked I, last time. <laughs> I've been I've been keeping an eye. Um, so two, we're picking two. Yes, two people. Okay. Um, I'm gonna pick. Jillian asked, "What did I coach? I coach personal finance and business." <laughs> um, so I'm picking someone who's been dropping gems on the chat. Um, and this person is K Tors. Am I pronouncing that correctly? K Tor, yay! Okay, so <laughs> K Tor, you have to copy one of your comments right now and send us an email with your profile picture. It's a pretty picture. Um, K Tor, yes, yeah, send us copy one of your comments and send us this profile picture, um, the full version of it to hello at clevergirlfinance.com as soon as you get a chance, and we'll get this set out to you. <laughs> and I got one more. Um, the second person is and you just highlighted her comment, da Dahlia. Oh, Dahlia. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so same, Dahlia. <laughs> um, send us a comment, and well, you don't have a profile picture, so I, if you can send this to us as soon as possible with your email that has your name in it and your mailing address, and we'll get this out to you. So yes, this book. Oh, I think Dahlia won a book. 
Oh, she did. I just saw her. I just saw her comment. Your book should have been in the mail. You should have received it. You should check again. And if not, email us back. I don't remember when it was mailed, but email us back. So we need to pick somebody else. Okay. I got I got another one. Uh, <laughs> Minnie C. Riley. Okay, Minnie. I can't find any comments to put her name. Yes. Hi, Minnie. I see you. <laughs> So you are a giveaway winner. So send us, again, your profile picture that we see, um, one of your comments from this chat, and send it to hello at clevergirlfinance.com. Dolly, if you didn't get your book yet, just reply to the email that you sent, just so I can see what date that book went out. If not, no problem. We'll send you another one. Um, so yes, this book is out today. I would appreciate your support. You can order this book everywhere. Uh, books are sold. The audio book comes out about a month after the actual book drops and that's just standard uh, pr uh process and um if you are in new york we have our new york city event um on saturday yeah. this saturday july 9th at 10 10 30 a.m eastern standard time we're going to be talking about the book we're going to be drinking mimosas even though i don't drink alcohol <laughs> but y'all <laughs> <laughs> we're gonna have some good food we're gonna have networking and it's going to be a great great time so thank you guys so much for all of your support uh we appreciate you and we'll be back next week with another topic so until then see you guys later and thanks for being here yes see you bye, bye.